Howdy, y'all. How have y'all been? Osashiburi. That is Japanese for long time no see. See, I give you a little culture with this. So, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some uh, video of cute ducks. They're not really ducks. They're actually, uh, they're called little grebes, but there's babies and the parents. And I'm also going to show you a little bit of Okinawa Dance Festival, which is one of my favorite things to go to in Japan. And it's very special. This has been a kind of epic week in many regards, both good and bad for me. Um, and this is why I say you get a reward at the end of the video, because this is a little bit more like therapy than an actual uh, review or anything like that. But the Okinawa Festival, this is, this is a good thing. That's actually been postponed or canceled for three years running because of COVID. This is the first year in three years anyways that it's actually been on. And I was very stoked to go to it. I filled, out, filled up about 300 gigabytes of memory. Uh, so yeah, mostly photos, but a lot of video too. So basically, <laughs> what's made this week crazy for me? It started out good, and uh, mostly, I'll say mostly it's good, but there's been a lot of stress involved. Um, basically, uh, I met somebody. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Z9s around lately, uh, mostly uh, my Japanese counterparts, you know, shooting uh, Kingfisher and stuff like that. Um, but this time it was actually a foreigner, uh, who was also shooting the King Fisher and I talked to him for a few minutes and, you know, lo and behold, he was happy to, uh, arrange a meeting for me and him to go to my favorite park and, uh, basically share the Z9, let me use it with the, he just got a 800 millimeter 6.3 lens. Yeah. So, so we did this and not only was he happy to let me do that, he was also let me to he let me switch out to my Z6 with that lens, um, you know, and he was using the Z6 too. Um, so it was interesting, I think, for both of us, but, you know, obviously a little bit more for me. Um, and I'll say this, spoiler, the, the actual, the lens was the standout of the day. The Z9 was great, but probably a little bit because, I mean, first, I'm, I'm not completely used to the Z9. And also, I didn't want to go too deep into set, changing his settings. I did change some stuff, but I didn't go too ridiculous. Uh, but, but the 800 millimeter lens, I mean, you know, the first thing that you notice is obviously the weight. I mean, the size of it, you know, I was using the other lens I brought was my 200, 400 millimeter. Uh, this is with the hood put back for those who haven't seen my video on this. Uh, there's another one coming. It's part of the stress here. Why that video hasn't come already. It was supposed to already be up. But uh, this lens is similar in size. <laughs> so it's actually a little bit shorter, I believe. Um, but this is about, what, maybe double the weight of that lens? Not quite, but this is 3.3 kilograms. I forgot the exact weight of that lens. I want to say 2.5-ish, 2.3, I'm not sure. But uh, but it feels like it's it feels like a kid's toy when you hold the 800 millimeter. I mean, 2.5 whatever it is 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 still you know a lot of weight. But because of the size and because of the balance, when you pick it up, it literally feels like a plastic kid's toy. It doesn't feel like a professional level lens, but it is. It is, and I'm sorry, I keep looking at the monitor over here. I do that sometimes. Maybe I'll uh, no. I want to turn it off, but it's. See, the focus has been a little bit funky today, which we're going to do. So that lens just, it's so light, um, but it does very, very well. And the other big surprise of the day was that that lens on the Z6, this is not a Z6 II, this is a Z6. It performed seemingly as well as it was performing on the Z9. Now, again, I didn't go too deep into his settings and I'm sure if I had the Z9 for a while, I could, you know, edge out better results than I was with the Z6, but the results I was getting with the Z6 were very, very good. Um, and that's my first time ever using that long of a lens. Okay. Uh, 400 millimeters, my previous longest, unless you count a uh, 300 millimeter on a micro four thirds, which is 600 millimeter, but that was a long time ago. Uh, so yeah, so the 800 millimeter, uh, it's not really the lens for me, but if it was, if it was handed to me or if my budget somehow grew massively, I would put that lens on my shelf just to have it for the special occasions because the reach 
and the weight being, I mean, you, mm, you could take it places with not, th this is a whole ordeal. I've gotten better at it. I've gotten stronger and I figured out ways to carry it on my bike instead of on my backpack. But, uh, yeah, sorry, this is shaking the tits. That's, that's, see, that's not an earthquake. That's that lens. But, uh, yeah, so the 800 millimeter was really uh, impressive lens. I still give the 400, 204 millimeter AFS VR lens that I have here uh, the credit as being the better lens. Uh, not probably as sharp <laughs> and not as clinically uh, perfect, but overall character, the overall bokeh. And there's just something, there's that je ne sais quoi, the magic in this lens. The 800 millimeter is a great lens. It really is but they're different. They're different, and I still prefer the, the overall image from this lens. Uh, and this lens is a Boca Master. This thing focuses at two meters, at 400 millimeters, so it's getting into almost that macro territory. But that being said, with 800 millimeter, I'll post some photos here because we're gonna get into, oh no, I can't, <laughs> yeah. So that's actually the meat of this, this video I keep forgetting, but so, um, so here's the thing. We'll start with what went well, you know, the 800 millimeter went well, the Z6 doing very well. The Z9 felt great in my hand, uh, a little bit. I didn't like the, uh, switch for video and to, uh, photo. It was, it's sideways instead of straight up and down, like on the Z6. It was just a minor little gripe and, you know, he liked it better that way. I really thought it was just more natural to go up and down with his thumb in this weird side to side motion, whatever. Um, but the Z9 felt very good in my hand and lighter than I expected and not as massive as I was expecting it to feel. I know it's light, it's smaller than the D6, but, but the thing is really realistically what was happening was that I would forget which camera I had in my hand. I always knew which lens I had on but switching back and forth for different situations between the two different lenses and two different cameras, I sometimes would forget, do I have the Z6 or do I have the Z9 in my hand? It's completely true. It's, it was really, uh, it, was, <laughs> it was surprising to me. I mean, I would literally have to, wait a second. Oh, okay. This is what I, but even after shooting with it, I just sometimes have to like double check. Oh yeah, I've got the Z6 or, oh yeah, I've got the Z9. Cause they really do feel remarkably similar in the hand and function for the most part, the same. Um, and granted I didn't sleep pretty much the night before I had a lot of work to do the night before. So I was a little bit not at my best. Uh, anyways, so here's where sh things got wonky. Let's say, okay. Uh, the first thing, kind of the first thing, uh, when I got home, um, I had realized I did, so I shot video pretty much all in raw, you know, and also he has his photo settings on raw. I didn't change that. I should have, but, uh, the video files, when I got home, all that remained was the 1080p proxy files for all the raw files. Now I was using a SanDisk, 200, SanDisk 256 gigabyte Extreme Pro, whatever. One of, one of the ones that's actually supposed to do pretty well on the Z9. Uh, what I was finding was that at the top settings, uh, raw settings, frame, top frame rates, it would record uh, for either between three seconds to 10 seconds, depending on the mode. Um, but you know, it cut off the file. So what I was doing was, was I was stopping recording before I got to that limit. Something I learned from the hack GH twos to do. And it seemingly was saving the files. And then I started slowly going down to lower raw settings. I did try ProRes once, but you know, and I was actually getting full lengthy recordings and a couple modes I was limited to like two minutes or something like that, but I was still you know, it seemed to be saving the files. And again, I had the proxy files when I came home, but the raw files were just nowhere to be found. So as a result, you know, because the memory card was full, but I was only getting, it's a 256 gigabyte card, but I was only getting 80 gigabytes of files off onto my computer, mostly photos, some proxy files. I even had a 64 gigabyte card and it was the same situation. Um, so I tried my best to use some some uh, techniques to recover the files, but there's one piece of software I wanted, which was called Recover, and I don't remember the exact reason now, but I I couldn't get that software onto the Windows system I was using. I forgot there was some sort of thing I I I effed up my 
my system recently and I can't remember exactly what was happening at this point because it's been a crazy week. I've just, my brain is fried at this point more than usual. But, uh, so what happened <laughs> is I used an old Linux drive I had, a little SSD that had a nice Linux system on it, compact but efficient, and I was seeing if there was a way I could get into the files from that. And what I was finally going to do is actually create a new uh, clone of a system and use Recover to try and get it. But I did. A car the cardinal mistake is I, I did not disconnect all my drives except for the only ones I needed. I left them connected and when I was going to delete some portions on something I wanted to delete the portions on, I had done that. Um, but I had to redo it and when I redid it, it had moved up to my Windows hard drive and I deleted portions on it. it anyways, so my Linux, the, the, the files are still there, but the operating system is just, it's messed up. It's not functional and I almost got it recovered, but then, you know, I noticed weird stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a computer expert. I've over the years reluctantly learn stuff but i forget it by the next time i've had to do it so anyways the bottom line is my lin my, my window system is messed up um and then that that linux system was an older system it really wasn't up to spec so i i had to move stuff from one large drive to another and then i now have a drive which i've put a newer version of kubuntu or kubuntu i don't know how you say that but it's, it's actually not the system I wanted, but it's the only one that would go on. Uh, Linux for me is always, I, I love Linux actually. <laughs> it's, I've, I've spent years on it avoiding Windows until I finally kind of had to for certain programs go back to Windows. But, uh, but anyways, I'm not going to bore you with all the details. The bottom line is I'm using the system. Um, I'm even going to be doing video editing on this for a little while. I did find, I believe, my backup uh, disks for Windows to actually get it back on. Um, it took me a while, but I'll probably do that eventually. But, you know, I think I'm just going to stick in the Linux world for a little while here. So things are going to be a little different. Um, so the other thing, though, that happened here, I know I'm all over the place here. There's a reason I'm not on script, and that's because I wrote two big scripts. One for this lens and one for a uh, forthcoming Nikon camera. Going to do that later. But uh, those are stuck on the Windows system. I can't actually get to them right now. So I said... F it. I keep on wanting to say it. I'm trying to not get a uh, demon. Not that I actually have monetization on this, but I'm, I'm doing some tests here to see if this video gets pushed out more. So first of all, what I'm drinking here, why well, I have two cups. This is water, and this is very old grape juice. But then the other test I'm doing here, somewhere in this room, there is a very large Japanese company logo. Anyways, by the way, the Sakura just finished about a month ago. Oh, come on. There, slowly, slowly, slowly. And I got a lot of Sakura cherry blossom stuff coming too, including Kingfisher in the cherry blossom, including a pair that decided to mate in basically the gutter, even though giant 500 year old cherry blossom tree was just feet away from them they decided to mate a chain link fence <laughs> can you tell i'm a little bit more frazzled than usual but um it's been a long two months of shooting anyways there's been a lot going on but so the other thing okay so the other thing the other oh no there's two more the two more things first the other mm, it's not major but it was, it's kind of i should have known but uh, the Z9, he had his settings only on RAW, and I should have switched to JPEG and RAW because I only use Darktable. I've always used Darktable, which is really nice in this situation because with Linux, it's easy. Darktable's there. Um, but uh, what happened here, I'm going to do a little recording to show you here in more detail. But what happened here is, unfortunately, here you have... Are you recording? Yes. Here we have these beautiful Kawasemi images I did with the Z9. Unfortunately, the ISO, I don't. I noticed uh, on the Z9, it seemed like shooting very similar. Some of it might be because of the F6.3, but I do sometimes stop down on my 400 millimeter, 200, 400 millimeter. Oh, this is, 
this is yeah. So this is actually on my four. You can see here, four hundred millimeters. So this is actually on my four hundred millimeter. This proves the point. I actually hadn't looked that deep into these yet, but uh, but what I noticed is that it was it was pumping the ISO up higher than I normally would uh, than it would. This was in he had it in auto mode, and I just said you know I'll stick with that because I wanted to compare it to how it worked on the Z6. But you can see this is ISO nine thousand. Now it was early morning and not the best lighting but most of them were between 8,000 and 10,000, the ones that I've seen here so far. I haven't looked at all these photos because I have thousands and thousands and thousands. But, uh, but the bottom line is I was, I was thinking that my Z6 doesn't go up usually that. It would be like the same image would be like 5,000. And there's probably a good reason for that, maybe the larger, mega, or larger pixels. But yeah, so regardless, I really like some of these images and I think I'll be able to bring them out and make them good with a little bit of noise reduction. Um, but yeah, so what it is though here, so my, my problem is when I click on these images in dark table, this is in light table right now. So I click on an image, I, oh, I like that one actually. I like this one, he's got his mouth open. I'm gonna click on it. Um, here we go, dark table could not load Z, or NZ98749NEF. Switching back to light table. Anyways, dark table doesn't have the, it doesn't have the, the um, whatever. It's not updated yet for working with the Z9 files. It works with Z6 files, Z7 files, Z6.2 files, Z7.2 files. It doesn't work with Z9 files yet. I'm sure that's coming probably within six months or less, but it's kind of good to know because I was really on the fence about selling a lot of stuff and getting the Z9 but the bottom line is there's really no purpose in me doing that right now because there's not much I can do with them. I don't use Photoshop, like I said. There are some programs I could use, but Darktable is my go-to. I really like Darktable for a lot of reasons, and I know it pretty well. So that 800 millimeter lens, though, <laughs> damn tempting. It's a little bit long for me. That, that fo focal length is longer than I really would want to use uh, on a daily. If I had an uh, expanded budget, if some magic happened here selling my stuff on filmstudiotaku.com, uh, maybe I would look into that lens as something for special occasions, for special trips, because it is light enough that I can travel a lot easier than with, I'm not going to pick it up again, it's too heavy, <laughs> with my 200 to 400 millimeter lens. So, this is all over the place, I know, okay, but there's something else that happened. This is the big one. This is the, oh, mm. I noticed... A little bit later in the day, um, I think I'd seen it a couple times early in the day, but it started happening more consistently. With the Z9, when I switch into, now I have to pick it up because I always forget the name. So, because it's got normal stabilization and active stabilization, which I believe they changed the sport on the new lenses. But in active stabilization, I was noticing a little jitter. And I'd mentioned it to the guy, I'm not saying his name because I don't know if he wants privacy or not, but, but, um, and he had said that it's something he noticed too when he switched to sport mode on lenses with a Z9 that it had a little jitter sometimes. So, okay, I switched to normal mode and it seemed to go away. And he said, yeah, it wasn't really doing it in normal mode. Mmm, grape juice. But it seemed to get a little bit worse but we we're pretty much at the end of the day, so I didn't think much of it. So several days later, I went to the Okinawa festival and I brought the lens so I could get some really nice portrait type close-ups of the dancers. And I was doing a lot of video and I started seeing it and I switched over to normal mode and I was still seeing it. And it got to the point where every few seconds, if I held it super still, it wouldn't do it. But as soon as I pan a little bit, you just get this and then it'd be okay for a little while. And then, and then okay for a while. It's there. It's permanently there until I send it in for repair. Um, so I have a theory of, I mean, there could be all kinds of reasons why that happened. And to the guy, obviously it's not, I don't blame you in any way whatsoever. But what I think, and something we discussed is that the, 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 cause you know, the AFS lenses are known to function better on the Z9 sometimes than on the, the original AFS bodies. So my theory was that it's giving them a little bit more voltage and, you know, this is an older lens. So, you know, maybe it's just, 
you know, from its age or something, it just wasn't able to handle the voltage and something just kind of got a little, little bit fried in there. I'm not really sure. I can't say to know for sure. Um, bottom line is I'm going to have to send it in to Nikon for repair and hopefully it doesn't cost me an arm and leg because it is, you know, new that lens, I think was something like six or seven thousand dollars. Uh, so yeah, I did want to send it in for cleaning anyways, although optically it's really clean. Like when you look in there and it's, the image is very clean up to about F 16 maybe. And then after that, though, you start seeing little specks, which is kind of normal with a lot of uh, long lenses, but I, I, I like to sometimes shoot and get that really clear depth of field. So I was going to send it in anyways, and now I kind of, I have to, um, I might be selling the lens, but I'm not going to sell it like that. If I'm going to sell it, I might as well get it cleaned, have pristine optics, truly pristine optics, and everything working as it should be, and then decide on where I'm going from there. Maybe by then the Z Z9 will be ready. But anyways, so that's basically it. My week has been crazy. The Okinawa Festival was awesome, though. Regardless of the issues, I did get enough because I was shooting slow motion, so three seconds was, you know still a good uh what 15 <laughs> no, 50, yeah, yeah a good uh i don't know four, uh 12 to 15 seconds of video so you know ah uh, <laughs> shit there's just been so much going on anyways that's it you guys uh thanks for watching this random ass episode and uh enjoy the baby ducks and some Okinawa dancing, the best Okinawa dancing on the earth. Okay, well, so that's about it. Uh, I do want to thank you for watching Film Studio Taku again. I'm sorry. The thing is that I got to get some content out there. I got to try and get whatever those fancy algorithms to actually like recognize my channel as something that's reposting. Um, I think there's a little bit of information in here that's useful. I mean, that, that 800 millimeter, I wish I could show you. I got some awesome dragonfly photos. Like, you know, it's it's... I forget what it is, like five meters minimum focal distance, but there was these really, really cool, super thin drag. He's actually been shooting with long lenses longer than me, so yeah. But regardless, it was, it was a challenge, and I, I, I met the challenge. So again, thank you for watching Film Studio Taku. Please check out my website, filmstudiotaku.com. Please buy some prints. I have some beautiful prints and now canvas options are available and there is going to be a lot of stuff coming the okinawa dancers are coming the kingfishers are coming <laughs> like the dragons are coming they really are the kingfishers i have so many kingfisher pictures over the years but i've kind of been really picky about which ones i want to choose for printing out because in general you choose very high isos to get the freeze frame and i really want to choose the best of the best clear images with as low noise as possible um but yeah there's uh, a lot of other stuff i'm going out to do some landscapes uh, i've got a lot of landscapes ocean landscapes and stuff but i'm gonna do some very specific ones that i've been wanting to do for a long time some long exposures as well so keep an eye out filmstudiotaku.com for all your wonderful best images possible to put on your wall to impress the girls or impress the guys with how deep and thoughtful you are with images of japan Peace.